my lifestyle has completely sh shifted and changed. Like I used to be a party animal. I used to do all these things and I would come into the gym on Monday and be like, all right, let's go, come on, health and fitness. And it's just like, dude, I would have looked at myself as a, as a coach and been like, this guy's tripping, man. Like, yep. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to be like that anymore. It's, I don't want to, I don't want to have clients looking at me like that. I don't want to have um, people, kids, whatever, looking at me like, you know, like this guy, you know, says one thing and does the other. And so, yeah. you know, it's, I got to take ownership for those, those things. And, you know, I got to be that example that I, that I, that I promote, you know. Welcome to Authentic Conversations. I'm your host, Ryan James Miller, and I believe the way to freedom, fulfillment, and success ultimately comes by living as the most authentic version of yourself. If you're ready to live the life you've dreamed of, you're in the right place. All right, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. So today I have a really cool opportunity to, uh, to have a conversation with a guy that I can call a friend, uh, but beyond that, he has demonstrated uh, a wonderful level of manhood. And this isn't even a word, but badassery just comes to mind. So I'm super stoked to have Austin Cooper with me here today. He's the founder of Recoup Fitness. I think I said that maybe Recoup Health was the right way to say that. He'll correct me in just a second, I'm sure. But Austin's been a longtime fitness enthusiast. He's been a trainer, a coach in that space, and just has a lot of knowledge there. Uh, maybe more excitingly, at least uh, uh, to a lot of people, or more importantly, uh, he is a Navy veteran. He served his time in the military, sacrificing himself for us even so we can sit here and have something as simple as the conversation that we do today. Uh, so we'll probably talk a little bit of that because I'm sure that that has helped shape him into the man he is today. He is a husband. He's a new father. As a matter of fact, he is watching his child on the baby monitor right now to make sure that he stays napping and nothing gets too crazy. Uh, but for now, what up, Austin? How's it going, man? Yo, what's up, Ryan, man? Good to see you. <laughs> I you totally too. am watching the baby on the monitor. It's like uh, dad duty in full effect right now. Hell yeah, man. You know, the, I should say the one thing that you never want to make the mistake of saying is ever saying that you are babysitting your child. So many guys totally, say that. And I'm like, what's totally. wrong with you? You're not babysitting. Yeah. It's your freaking kid. Just yeah, nuts. dude. That's so <laughs> funny, man. I'm going to have to share. I'm going to have to share that little clip with some friends. <laughs> Seriously, you will. You will. <laughs> okay. So I've opened up just about every episode of this season of the podcast the same way. So I want to open it up to you. You get to fly and do whatever you want with it. But for you, how would you describe manhood and or masculinity? How do you define that? Describe that? What does that mean to you? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, you know, just as of, as of lately, I feel like my manhood and masculinity has just exploded even more just being a father and, and just learning and diving into that whole realm of uh, fatherhood. Um, but really, you know, I, I've boiled it down to no longer having to like, chase anything. Like I'm not trying to find the the next best high the you know the next best look the i'm not trying to impress anyone anymore i'm just happy in my space and i think that once i was able to get there into that space i was really able to just kind of uh my my life just kind of opened up into this like wonderful place you know a mm -hmm. place that I want to be in all the time. I, w I just want to spend time with my family, um, you know, be able to provide for them. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, no longer chasing the next best thing. I've got mm. it. I've got it. Mm. You know, I, I think what's super cool about that is, you know, you said like, it has exploded and, you know, a as the result of becoming a husband and a father. And it's so interesting because um, there, as I've had this conversation, I've asked this question, I've talked about this a lot with a lot of guys, and there are kind of different um, views on this to some degree. But one thing that we know is, is, you know, that when we try to define manhood exclusively as 
the, the tough guy, it's all about strength, uh, which that all, stuff is all so important. But when, when that's it, that we just, we just miss such a huge part of what it means to be a man. But for you, you know, you, you had the opportunity as you went and served in the military to exercise that, to really demonstrate. And obviously that was the place in life that you were in. But now as you have gone through these different seasons of life, manhood is somewhat different to you now, right? Than it was back then. Oh, totally. Yeah. I was just having that conversation with someone. It's like, I, you know, I've done, I've done my, all the things that I've wanted to do, you know, I've proven that I can be, um, you know, sh show signs of a badassery, as you said, <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, I no longer have to like prove that, especially I don't have to prove that to myself. I, I, I know that for a fact, um, my family knows that. And, you know, I'm just, um, you know, as that, that whole life, you know, being that way has like set the groundwork for where I am now. And it's like, you know, like it, it's cool, but I mean, it does not define me as a person, mm -hmm. you know, it hasn't, it doesn't define me at all as a person. Um, do, do you think that, do you think though, that, do you think you would be the man today that you are to your wife and, and, and to your child, had you not been through some of those experiences of having to exercise the physical strength and grind it out and grit it out? No way. I mean, I, I say no way, just because I've learned so much along the way, this, like mm -hmm. this path has led me straight here. And it's, you know, this is the, the path that I, I was on or I'm on. I mean, this is a guided path, you know, it's no, it's no mistake that, you know, I, I went through those things. I've had those trials, those tribulations. And, you know, like this is a, this is a guided route and, um, I'm on it and, uh, you know, I'm, my heart is open and, you know, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, firm believer in God. I'm a Christian and, you know, everything that he's done in my life, he's just proven to me over and over again. Like, there's just no way I could do it without him. Everything that I do is like, it, it's just guided, you know, it's not, it's not a mistake. And, and I'm here because, and I'm able to be the way that I am because of him and because of everything that I've been through. So. And, and where I, I would doubt that you would say that, you know, you came out of the womb and you had a clear vision on what the rest of your life was going to look like. So, so where did that start for you? I mean, was that shaped with a, a relationship with your dad or in your family or with somebody else? Or did that happen way later in life? Like, how, how did you start to see that? Like, this is the path I need to step down in order to start shaping uh, this identity of who I want to become? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, you know, I grew up with a great relationship with my father. Um, an even better relationship with my mother, uh, my mom, my mom and dad divorced when I was young. Um, but, uh, you know, my dad was always around, um, at least, you know, I, I had plenty of time spent with my dad, but my, my mom was just there all the time, you know, and my mom just completely shaped and structured our lives to be just good people, you know, and, um, I had no, uh, no one in my family. And my, my, was in the military. My grandfather was drafted in uh, the Korean War or was drafted in, in a Vietnam, sorry. Um, but uh, no, maybe it was the Korean War. I'm not sure, but he, he never talked about the military, you know, so I had no like guiding, um, you know, forces or anything guiding me into the military at all. I just, um, I wanted to do something um, bigger than myself for sure. And I knew that at a young age, like I just wanted to just do good work. And, uh, you know, I looked into all the branches actually, and, you know, I found the best one for me. I, uh, swam and I played water polo in high school and a little bit in college. I was a lifeguard, um, at the beaches in long beach when I was, um, you know, 18 years old. And, um, I went in to the Navy um, as a combat rescue swimmer and oh. I made it through that pipeline and everything. It was just like such a perfect fit for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I couldn't imagine doing any other job 
in the military, at least then I couldn't imagine doing any other job um, in the military and, you know, that uh, whole structure and that whole lifestyle really, really did, um, you know, have a, a good impact on my life. I learned a lot from that, you know, very high speed, high stress um, kind of jobs that now I just look at like, you know, any kind of stressful situation that I may find myself in now. And, you know, it's just like, it's, it's not comparable. Mm. you know, to the things that I was doing on a daily basis. So, but um, yeah, I, I would say my mom more just kind of guided that path of just, you know, teaching us to be um, selfless. Mm. Cool. So do you, you talked about being selfless and it's just, it's such a great characteristic to have. It's so important, especially in society today, but do you ever find that there are places either past or, or present certain types of people, roles, environments that you're in where it gets more difficult to do that? Or do you feel like it's been so ingrained into you that it becomes just very natural in all instances? Oh, uh, well, there's definitely like places. It's, it's hard for me to have uh, sympathy for people, um, to be honest, you know, and it's, it's hard to be selfless to people that I see that are able and willing or uh, unable, but unwilling to like mm. make changes in their life. Um, so that, that is something that I certainly struggle with, you know, like, um, you know, people can, in, in my line of work now, people can complain and be, um, you know, completely unhappy with where they are mentally, uh, physically, you know, body aches, chronic pain, um, but will do whatever they can do but change their lifestyle that they're mm -hmm. currently living in. And it's, for me, it's like hard to be sympathetic to that, to be selfless, to put myself out on the line for those kind of people. It's like, you know, if you don't want to make the change for yourself, like uh, I can merely do nothing for you except for take your money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, sometimes that's what people want. And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't have that ability to be that way. You know, I, I can't like fake the funk and, you know, like help and like try and help these people. If they're just unwilling to help themselves. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's, and that's something I certainly struggle with. But, and I think it's, it's super valid, right? I mean, there, there's definitely this sense of wanting to provoke people to change there. There's this, um, you know, desire that we have, like when we lead to rally people, to get them to do things they've never done, especially when it comes to something like health and fitness, you know, you're on the couch, we see you slowly dying at a much faster rate than you normally would be. We're going to do everything we can, but if you don't want to do it yourself, you're not going to do it. And I feel like, you know, it, it, it would be very easy to just say, you know what, then, then just forget you. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah, seriously. So, so, so yeah. how do you, how do you really instigate? Because I think that as I look around at men today, specifically, um, I, I see this as being a huge problem because we live in a society today that's so quick to point the finger at everybody else for every problem that exists in, in the world, including the problems that we have in our own life and our own household, whatever. And so how do you at least begin to instigate people to change that, that at least at the surface don't want to change. Uh, dude, I try to be an example, mm. you know, and I try to, uh, you know, I've, I've been, you know, trying lately to kind of just promote like this lifestyle that I live because the proof is in the pudding, you know, mm -hmm. um, to be honest, like, um, and, you know, people see me and they, you know, they see, a, oh, you know, a young kid or whatever. And they're, oh, he's 35. He's, you know, works a full-time job, you know, switching from days to night shift. Um, you know, I, I do it all. Like, you know, I'm a dad. I, you know, people always say, oh, well, wait till you're 30. Wait till you don't work in a gym. Wait till this, wait till that. It's like, dude, I, I'm doing all of those things. You know, I'm, I'm you know, just living by an example, you know, leading by an example. And I think people see that. And that is kind of like my gateway into like, mm. you know, helping these people. Um, but a lot of people are intimidated by it too, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I, you know, I'm not promoting any crazy stuff other than what I know works, you mm -hmm. know? So, 
Um, and I'm pretty blunt and straightforward with it. And I think that intimidates a lot of people, mm. especially men, you know, like uh, I get approached by women wanting to change way more than men wanting mm. to change, because I think there's an ego thing that goes along with that, you know, um, especially, you know, with guys like, you know, we've got these like, I'm already where I want to be and, mm -hmm. you know, nothing that, you know, an ice bath is going to fix. <laughs> well, and I think too, like one of the big problems, and I'm sure you would agree with this and I'd love to hear if you have more opinion here, but I think one of the big problems, especially as it relates to health and fitness is women, unfortunately have been forever judged by the way that they look. And so there is this built in lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, like even when they look really good, they don't think they look good. So there's kind of this built in inherent desire that they have to want to look better. And right. uh, until maybe like right now today, when the world is prom promoting the fact that you can be absurdly obese and be happy with yourself, which is a whole nother topic. But, but I think <laughs> inherently that's kind of been the history. Whereas when you swing to the other side of men, like, the dad bod and like, you know, the beer belly. And like, th that's almost been like, yeah, that's cool. And, and it makes me sick to my stomach when I see these guys out there, especially these sloppy ass ones. I see them at the river all the time. And it's like, you are so out of shape. And yet your wife or your girlfriend is so dialed in. And I'm like, I don't even know how this happens, but like, I, I think that like that has been They've just been given permission to be that way. So I think that's a huge problem that, that men are living in is they've been given permission to be out of shape to some degree. And then I think yeah. second to that is, is kind of to what you're talking about is those guys that are out of shape to some degree or another, they don't want to admit that, that there's an issue or a problem that they need help because, you know, yeah. manhood is supposed to be about being prideful and like, I can do this thing myself. And so there's so many barriers, you know, to overcome in that way. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's like, it's like almost, they think it's cool. You know, it's like cool to be able to like take down a, a 12 pack of Coors Light while you're chilling out the river or whatever. It's like, dude, that's not cool. Like that was cool when we were 21, maybe, <laughs> you know, like maybe even then it wasn't cool, but we thought it was cool. Yeah. Like, it's certainly not cool now, you know? And, uh, you know, I work, I'm in the, in the power industry. So I work at a power plant. And so it's like a very blue collar job. Mm. Everyone around me is, um, you know, overweight, unhappy, talk shit about their wife. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I've got no nothing in, in common with any of these guys I work with. And, um, you know, it's like and it, it just seems like they're so unhappy, but, you know, nothing's going to change that. So they mm -hmm. just keep living their life and and doing these things. And, you know, they make fun of me for being like this. You know, I, I got teased as a kid for being chubby. Now, as an adult man, I'm getting teased for being fit. You know, mm. it's crazy. I and mean, it's like, uh, but, but that's the defense mechanism, right? Like, right. When, yeah, for sure. When, when, when they were teasing you when you're, you were young, it was just because that was their defense because there was something that they didn't feel good about themselves because they were just immature right. kids. Now they're just immature yeah. adults that right. now they, they feel so insecure and they are so unhappy that the only yeah. thing that they can do is try and drag other people into their garbage. Totally, dude. And it's, it's so real. And, and I've seen that more in the last two years being that I've, mm. you know, I'm into this industry now away from the gym and all of that, which is why I'm trying to get back into it because like these people just try to get you on their level, man. And it's like, I can't let that happen. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just, I cannot like, I can't even, I, I don't even want to be on that level to begin with. So like these guys come and try to have conversations with me or whatever. And they start saying all this stuff about the, how their life sucks and what this and that. It's just like, dude, I'm out of here, man. Like, I don't even have time for this kind of conversation anymore. Not, not that I ever did, but it's yeah. like, golly. But it, but it, but, but it is, it, it is hard, right? Because when this is, this is very similar to just guys being in those same types of friend groups. When, when, even when we don't want that for ourselves, when we don't want to see our spouse that way or complain about our kids or whatever, 
when people around us are doing it enough, it does start to seep into us if we are not completely dialed into having that protected. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've seen people get taken down that rabbit hole, you know, like, and it, ha- it can happen so fast, right? Mm-hmm. And like, I see these guys get sucked in and it's just like, boom, you know, it starts with, you know, you see problems at home or they start, you yep. know, you know, losing sleep, gaining weight. And it's just like, it's like a trickle effect. And one yep. thing after another, after another, after another, and, you know, it's like, at what point do you stop say whoa why is this happening and let me change whatever is causing this you know and sometimes it's like so far gone that you know it takes a long time or even it it takes it's very hard to figure out what that root cause is Mm -hmm. um and i think you know once people just get so far down that rabbit hole it's like harder and harder to make that change Well, especially too, I think when, like when it's, well, I guess for the work environment, you know, you, you can choose to leave at some point or you can, or you can kind of disconnect the two. I think the one that's really difficult, and I've seen this happen, actually, I'm I'm watching this happen in many of the circles. I kind of, uh, hover around where, you know, there's one guy that is a really good dude, but he hangs around a whole bunch of assholes and he kind of becomes an asshole when he's with them everybody else thinks he's an asshole. And so you say something to him. It's like, Hey, like, you're not that way. And he's like, yeah, I'm not that way. And, and I, I don't, I don't want to be associated with them. And I'm like, then don't be around them. Well, but they're my friends. And when we're together, we have fun. So I think that gets really hard too. It's like, you're breaking away from the security of these friendships and these relationships, which almost like goes back to the playground days. You know, it's like you, you, you just find yourself in this environment that is so unbelievably hard to get out of uh, because you're afraid to not be a part of what you've been a part of, even if you don't hundred percent align and agree on the values of what they're holding. Right. Yeah. What's the saying? A bird's a uh, feather flock together. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so do you, so true. So do you, do you have a guy, a group of guys that you regularly surround yourself with that are more positive and contributing to you? You know, I, I, I've got, um, a small handful of friends, like friends that I truly call my friends that I, I can go and have coffee with once a month or whatever that Mm -hmm. just like, after I leave, after I leave that hour conversation over coffee, it's just like, damn, dude, that feels good. You know, Mm -hmm. it feels good to like, just be around people that, um, you know, express my same kind of uh, views on life and family men. And, you know, honestly, these people are usually, you know, 12, 15 years older than I am. You know, I've, I've, I've found that like, just, and, and no offense, you know, I'm sure I've to my friends that might hear this, you know, but like, dude, my friends, my age are just like, not where I'm at. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're not where I'm at spiritually, mentally, uh, physically. And, um, you know, I find that the, you know, a, a decade ahead of me has like gone through all of their, mm-hmm. their thirties. And I'm now like, oh shit, you know, I've got to start living my life a different way. I've got to start, uh, getting a, a different outlook on life. And, um, you know, so I resonate with, uh, some older gentlemen uh, a lot better than I do with my own, like, mm-hmm. you know, age group. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that, I think that that's super wise. And, you know, a lot of people hear a statement like that and they're like, oh gosh, you're just full of yourself. You know, people aren't where you're at, but I think it's important, especially when we have a family that we have our sights set on something greater than the standard that has been set by the general population or the general public. Yeah, like, 100%. you know, when you think about what m- most, like what is represented by most men today, and it's like, I don't want any part of that. Like I, I, I want to be as healthy as I can possibly be. And that looks different for yeah. people. I want to be as successful yeah. as I can be. And that yeah. looks different for people. I want, you know, I, I want to hold my wife in a, like in the highest regard. I want my child, like you're raising a son, like you have a right. significant responsibility to, to raise that young man, to, 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 to be a man and to respect women. And like, you don't, you don't want the noise coming in from around you. 
Right. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And I realized that as soon as that kid was born, it, it, maybe even before that, you know, it's like with everything that's going on in the world now, it's like these kids have to grow up and be so set in a good positive foundation or mm. this the world is going to rip them right off the ground man and it's yep. like you know it's it's intimidating it's scary um to see like the things that are happening in the public schools the things that are happening in you know in the health world of this of this country and you know health care is taking a turn and it's all these things are just like so so like just touch me so deep now that I have a kid that I'm just mm. like, I've got to, I've got to make sure that this kid is just rooted in like the best kind of lifestyle that I can provide for him and mm -hmm. rooted in such a strong foundation that when he sees these things going on, he's like, that's not right. You know, that's not how I was raised to be. That's, you know, mm. that's not how, you know, my old man said it should be, you know, and mm -hmm. I want him and I don't want to, and it's like a fine line. It's like, a, you know, he's a baby, he's an infant. And, you know, I'm already thinking about these things, but I don't want him to be like, you know, oh, my dad made me be this way or this or that. I just want to be an example of yeah. what it should be like and root him in that example. Yeah. I mean, that dude, I, I got to tell you, and for everybody listening, like that is the most important thing that we can do for our kids. You know, it, it, it we can't tell them what to do. We, we can, we do, but we all know we grew up. We were, we were kids. We were teenagers. We were, we were young adults. No matter what our parents yeah. told us, we were going to do what we wanted to do. But yeah. what, what oftentimes influences, and I can speak to this firsthand because in the early days, I did a really bad job with my oldest and she just happened to erase that from her mind and grow up so much better. But for our kids, it has really been about like, look to us, but then even more than that is look to what God expects of you. Like, look at the yeah. character and nature of the person that God calls you to be like yeah. that. That's what we're trying to do. You know, to, we make a mistake and, and we apologize or we own up to it. Like even those things, like we have to continue to model the behavior because we can say till we're blue in the face to do all these things. But if we're not doing them, our kids like you're a freaking liar on top of a jerk yeah. for the doing those things that you did. Yeah, straight up, man. Yeah, it's like, uh, how, how can you expect anyone to, how can you expect to lead anyone if you're not being a leader? Yep. yep. You know, um, well, it, that goes all the way back to like, you know, you know, even for you growing up, you said to your parents or going into the military, like if you were following somebody that was doing the opposite of what they were asking you to do, like you would call everything into question and you would have a hard right. time wanting to follow that. But yeah. that has helped shape you into the man that you are today, which then helps you influence other people, whether it's your wife, your son, your, your, your clients in the health and fitness community, like you're trying to yeah. influence them because you want to be that example, not to say, look right. at me, be like me, but like, look at me, hold the same values and go do that for yourself. Right. Yeah. And, you know, like, and I got to hold myself accountable for the things that, you know, I do now that I'm, you know, I'm coaching and, and teaching and doing all these things for clients. Like, I don't want them to be like, you are a liar, dude. Look at you. I see you out here on the weekends doing this, that, or the other, you know, it's like, so, you know, my lifestyle has completely sh shifted and changed. Like I used to be a party animal. I used to do all these things and I would come into the gym on Monday and be like, all right, let's go. Come on, health and fitness. And it's just like, dude, I would have looked at myself as a, as a coach and been like, this guy's tripping, man. Like, yep. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I don't I, want to be like that anymore. It's, I don't want to, I don't want to have clients looking at me like that. I don't want to have um, people, kids, whatever, looking at me like, you know, like this guy, you know, says one thing and does the other. And so, yeah. you know, I got to take ownership for those, those things. And, you know, I got to, 
be that example that I, that I, that I promote, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that's so good. That's so good. I mean, it, it, it's really the only thing that, that we can do and we need to do the best we can to do that. Yeah. Okay. So as I'm kind of like thinking about like somewhat of a closure on, on this discussion and this topic. So you are raising this young boy, this infant child right now in, into a young man. And so one day, uh, that boy is going to be a man himself and he's going to say things about his father. And so what are going to be the most important things that you want your son to say about you when he can finally recognize what you've done for him? Man, I want him to, well, I don't care what he says. I, I mean, I want him to know and feel that, you know, his dad was, is, was, you know, the best example to him that he could have been. I love him. And he, oh, man, I mean, I want to, that kid to just know how much I care and love for him and, you know, how much I tried to just be an example to him and how to, you know, the best, raise him to be the best man that he could be. And, um, you know, I want my child to say that I'm, I'm selfless. You know, I want my child to say that, you know, my dad is badass, dude. Like there's no one better than my dad. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I want to, and I want to be that way to him, you know? So I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question to end on, but you know, there's so many <laughs> things that and I, there's so many things that, you know, I want him to say about me and it's just, you know, like, uh, I, I just want him to know like that, you know, I cared about him and I care, you know, that he grows up to be and not necessarily a man like me, but just a good man, like a good dude, you know, take care of his wife. And, you know, you know, when he does things, excellent things in his life, you know, to just be humble and to act like he's been there before. And, you know, because, you know, it, it just takes so much to, to get through life and to have like such a, you know, a, a, a good life and, you know, stay on a great path. And, you know, once he, he's older and he starts to see like all these different ways he can go, like, I just hope that he, he's grounded, like I said, just grounded in just a uh, strong foundation that he, that he can be in. Mm. It is a huge question, but you know, I mean, for all the responsibilities that we have as men, um, there are two that rise to the very top for me uh, once we choose to, to step into the relationships. And the first one is to our wives. And it, it's so important that we do everything we can to serve them, love for them, care for them, lead them. Uh, and then second, is to the, and second is to that child. And, you know, we are their number one influence for good or for bad. And I think it's so important that more men uh, take responsibility. And I love the fact that, you know, part of the reason I was excited to have this conversation with you was because you, you have had such great experience in life at the like gritty, rough manhood, military, fitness, health, competitive nature, like that side of things, which is so important, but also you do have such a way about you that is tender and considerate and kind and and you are at this critical place as you're just discovering this new piece of yourself as a father. And so it's wonderful to set that tone for other guys that are raising children and to think about yeah. like all my life experiences have now led to a moment where I get to begin impacting, you know, one, two of the most important people in my life, or if you have more kids than more than that, but it's just, it's yeah. so important to do. Yeah. And, th and that's another thing too. It's like, you know, I want this kid to be like, dude, my dad was a good dad, but like my dad was a great husband. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad served my, my mom and, mm -hmm. um, he'll see that dude, because, you know, my wife and I love each other so much. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, 
she has helped me change into the man that I am today. Just, you know, just like reeled, reeled it in a little bit for me. Um, but uh, it's funny, you know, like I kiss, you know, I kiss my wife and the baby's like looking at me like, you know, and he's going to be doing that. For, he's going to be doing that. Like as he grows up, he's going to be like, you know, like dad kisses mom. Like, yeah. you know, he's going to see all those things. And um, I love that, man. Like I, 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 remember growing up and having friends whose like parents were just like so tight like best friends and I still can remember like you know hanging out with them and just like a totally different experience to be mm -hmm. around people that like love each other so much and like that love is like not just for parent and kid but like that love comes out like to the kids friends yes. and to the the rest of the community as well and it's like you know that that is like to me that's a very important thing you know um and that well, just goes along with you know setting that example especially back to what you said earlier you know and like this world that we live in today that kids you know are being bombarded with so much garbage and mm -hmm. and then a lot of broken homes unfortunately and it's not that it's our responsibility to take them on and and to support them but it's our opportunity again right. especially as dads and as men yep. i think we have a yep. significant opportunity to set the tone to lead and influence more young men that are going to come into our homes that are friends with our kids definitely to, sh to demonstrate to these young girls that are coming into our homes that are either friends or girlfriend or whatever, what it looks like to be a real man, the way to really yep. treat a woman that how, how, yep. how a woman respects herself. And, you know, just, there's so many things yep. that we have opportunities to do. So you're just yeah. at the, just the, just the very, very beginning, <laughs> yeah, of that. Dude. but it's amazing. It's amazing what you have in front of you. Yeah, it is. It totally is. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, I think that it, it's so great to just get so many different people's opinions and thoughts and ideas. And it's so much of that is influenced by experience. Sometimes that experience is out of really rough and, and just brutal things. And I'm sure you've had some of those, but other times it's through positive influence and setting the tone. And I love yeah. the fact that you've come to this place where, you know, you've, you've set yourself in a really good direction and you're setting the tone and you're leading by example. And clearly that's going to impact your family in amazing ways, impact even maybe some of those douchey coworkers that you work with, but definitely this clientele that you are working with and will continue to work more with in the health and fitness world again. And so I just yeah. appreciate the fact that I get to hear that and share that with other people. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Thanks for thinking of me and having me on here. It's, you know, I, I was telling my wife, like, I'll do this. Um, this guy, Ryan, that I used to train or, you know, be a coach for at CrossFit. Um, you know, asked me to be on his podcast. She's like, well, what's the, you know, what does he want to talk about? I was like, manhood. She's like, oh, that's perfect for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's awesome. Well, no, I appreciate it. So thanks, man. I really do. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Good to talk to you. Absolutely. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode of the podcast. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, no, not concerns, questions or positive comments for Austin, uh, we'll make sure to put his contact information in the show notes so you can reach him. You can reach out to him. I know he does some stuff on social media. You can follow him there. Um, if you have any concerns, issues, feedback, whatever, you know where to find me until next time. Be you be happy, be authentic. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Authentic Conversations. If you are ready to live the life you've dreamed of, I'm here to help. Head to ryanjamesmiller.com slash podcast to begin your journey. And if this episode impacted you in any way, pay it forward by sharing it with someone you know. I'm Ryan James Miller, and I'll see you next time on Authentic Conversations.